teeth and our entire society abandons it and says, no, bull, paganism, paganism. B.C., before Christ, no, we don't like that. No, we're changing that. It was before Common Era. That's what that meant. We're changing history. Babylon effect. Do you understand what they impose on you? So you may see you stay stupid. They've got their ways. Very powerful means. To the victor go the spoil. Remember, the reason they keep being the victor over and over and over, because they're willing to do things the righteous won't. The righteous have boundaries that they thank God for. They say, oh my God, what did you hear in this crime show? What did this person do? Oh my God, I'm so far removed from that. Holy God, what did they do? Oh my God, I can't believe I live on a planet with human beings that would dare do that. And you just thank God for your boundaries. Thank God. Thank God every day for your boundaries. But those people revel in it. They say, oh, you're the idiot. You're the fool. Your conscience, that's not going to pay your bills, idiot. Money, you want money, fool. Do you understand? you understand why it's written in Scripture that the things that are highly valued among men are detestable in the sight of God? Namely, money, because it represents everything. It's the epitome of everything. Everything you could ever want, you could get it with money, right? Guys, I mean, we, we got, how old do you have to be to be a prostitute? We got states where prostitution is legal in this country. Prostitution is legal in America, yes. So what, 18? Oh, as soon as the teenager, as soon as the girl, oh, she's a woman now, 18. And, uh, and she's allowed to go sell her body to, you know, guys any age, right? Uh, and that's it. That's, that's okay. That's morally and ethically, that, that's fine. That, that's, we accept that. You know, it's just, we live in a world of illusion, delusion. I'm telling you, friends, none of it makes sense, okay? We're not living by the golden rule. We are shunning the golden rule, treating others the way we want to be treated. And until we get that, and until we start treating the least of men the way we would want to be treated, if it was us that was the least of men, and we were hemorrhaging out out there on the streets... That's dangerous. That's a safety. That's a health and safety violation. How do they get away with it in this country? We say we got the Health and Human Services Department, all this crap. We're going to push vaccines down your throat. We're going to use peer pressure, bullying, whatever tactics, methods we want. But yeah, man, you know, we, yeah. And we, the mainstream media, you notice they don't ask any. Is Fauci getting any money or any of these other doctors? You see the same talking heads out there over and over. This select group of experts. With no dissent. We got 100% consensus. Vaccines are 100% safe. Don't ask any more questions. End of story. You're unscientific fool idiot. And you're endangering society if you don't get vaccinated. We got cards. We got privileges for those that get vaccinated. And you're left out if you don't. So imagine if I decided, well, it's science to say the earth has reached its carrying capacity. And I go out there and I harangue and harass and menace all these pregnant women. I go find, who are these people? I, we got to go door to door. I mean, that's the sense I get from some of these people. I know Har Harvey Levin from TMZ Live, it's off the air now. I don't know what's happened there, but, you know, I mean, he was doing that. He, you know, this attitude where they want, they want a mandate. They want a law. You must get vaccinated. So now they've just made it so where you're, if you get vaccinated, you have privileges that the unvaccinated don't have. So I really love that restaurateur down in Southern California that said, we're only allowing unvaccinated people in my restaurant. I mean, how's he going to prove that? But yet you got to have a card. I mean, this, this harkens to something out of Nazi Germany. The, the brown shirts are going to compose it's door to door. So why shouldn't I say it's a scientific fact? Ladies, don't argue with me. Abort your baby. For God's sake, we got to save the planet. So I go out there with a scientific appeal, and I start running ads. And I say, you know what? I'm going to get all these rich people with money, and I'm going to contact them to try to find out who these anonymous authors of the Georgia Guidestones are. How is that legal in America to erect these Georgia Guides? Well, it's on private property, free speech and all that. They want to get the earth down to 500 million from the current about 8 billion. That's 15 out of 16 people they want dead. Do you understand? 
because they believe the science. They believe the earth reached its carrying capacity a long time ago. And we can't sustain any more human beings. So, I mean, what's the inference there to women that are, keep having children? Don't do it. I mean, rich, poor, in between. Don't do it. Stop it. We got too many babies. Look at the evidence. They're starving to death over here. They're homeless over there. Oh, the earth can't take them. I mean, we're causing climate change. There's too many of us, too many burning gasoline and fossil fuels and all this crap, heating and cooling their homes. You human beings are destroying the freaking planet. But we won't have a discussion about uh, disruptive technology, will we? We won't talk about how we can line the highways with solar panels and have clean, perpetual energy coming out our ears. We're not going to have that discussion. We're not going to talk about the fact that the ability to produce hydrogen artificially goes back to, what, the 16th, 17th century? And we could have miniaturized the ability into a compact unit that fits under the hood of your car. So instead of putting gasoline in your gas tank, you put water. So it's your water tank now, and you get 100 miles to a gallon of water. We're not going to have that discussion, are we? No. We're just going to say it's disruptive technology. What does it disrupt? Friends, profits. You understand? Relevance. Job security. Advantage. People love it. They love their lives in this world more than they love human beings, more than they love God. That's it, man. Money. It's all about the money. They love the money. They love the benefits thereof, the accoutrements. The wide and varied accoutrements. It's sick. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. And we're all connected. Inextricably interconnected. It's a scientific principle called osmosis. So if you think you're going to be able to divorce yourself and escape the suffering that you see around you, sorry. It'll never happen. Not reality. So you can feign happiness, but you're delusional. It's pseudo-happiness. Because true happiness is granted from on high. God is the giver of true, everlasting happiness. Because if it doesn't last forever, you're not on the right track, then it ain't real happiness. There's a litmus test. It has to be given from God. And if it just has to do with money, having a lot of money, that ain't real happiness. You believe a lie. You're living a life of delusion. I'm trying to help you out because, remember, we're interconnected. Your welfare is literally my welfare. And your welfare has to do with you being truly happy. That you are happy because God has blessed you with happiness. Because your values are right. Your heart is pure. You're right in his sight. You, you've got an attitude, a spirit of wanting goodwill toward all men. Not some selective men. Exclusive men. No, you get it. That we're all equally beloved. God loves us tinkers too. That's why we're told to love our enemies. We're trying to convince them to come out of darkness into the light and get the same reward. God's amazing grace extends to you too, my friends, you evildoers. Accept it. Turn from your evil ways and get the same gifts as those that have borne the heat of the day. I'm referring to the parable Jesus told about the workers in the vineyard. They get the same reward whether you spent one minute out there in the heat or your whole life being a righteous person and bearing the slings and arrows that are because you're righteous you're some idiot goody two-shoes some fool some liar that says he doesn't love money more than life itself like they do more than human beings like they do you understand what we're up against and you think we don't all need God collectively as a species and individually Think again, my friends. We do. We need God. I need God. And that's okay. That's the way it's got to be. you got to admit you're owned. You didn't create yourself. You, we know not from whence we came or where we're going. Nobody's come back to tell you exactly what it's going to be like on the other side of that veil. All we know is that it is a dramatic and profound sea change when everything we've lived our entire lives and been familiar with, including the back of our own hands, okay, is gone, gone. Do you understand? Everything. 
And all we've left is sorrow for those that have loved us and they're going to miss us and lament and weep. We've left pain and hurt for our loved ones. And everything that you counted on, your whole comfort zone, all the stuff you're familiar with and used to in your life, all your possessions, all your money, gone. Everything's changed up and you're entered a whole nother realm. You've walked through that door, through that veil. It's a big deal that we all have to face, including myself. I'm keenly aware of it. It's not being negative, it's being pragmatic. To give it some thought about the hereafter and where we're going, where we're going to be found worthy and deserving of going from here. But Jesus just said, we should not fear death. We should not, not saying that I don't, or that you know a lot of people don't fear it. And righteous, upright people that have lived a really noble life with a pure heart, they fear death too, believe me. A lot of unknowns, so we need God to deal with this and face this thing. But we want to be found worthy and deserving of inheriting a better world. We want to be ready for the world of tomorrow that God wants set up here. It's got to be perfect down to the smallest detail. If we're just honest with ourselves and honest with each other, we could share those ideas and arrive at something that works for all of us. You understand? We've all got to be able to learn to live together in peace and harmony and safety, security, freedom, and prosperity for all the inhabitants of the planet, not some. Because it's written that the meek, that is the righteous, shall inherit the earth. You know, I want to revisit this point, drive it home, about the federal minimum wage. It is such a big deal, because this is how it things descended they were allowed to descend it would have acted like a check and balance this dis this discussion this conversation i talk about would have been had then when when wages had to be raised okay as by mandate of law to maintain simply to maintain a given standard of living in other words so that the minimum wage workers the federal minimum wage workers could have remained even steven okay so the buying power of their federal minimum wage would have been sustained. Okay, there's no benefit to this because it was based on a standard of living. Just so that standard of living was maintained, that's all I'm asking for here. But we've failed to have the conversation for over half a century. I mean, is not the Federal Labor Department justified looking and looking after the interests of the federal minimum wage workers to come out and explain that to the public, have a press conference? And say, well, we're lowering minimum wage, and the workers say, what? And then the, the federal, then the federal labor department could come out and say, well, look, look how your cost of living went down here. There never used to be one dollar stores, but there's always been five and dimes, right? And uh, they say, look, housing came down, and food came down, and and here's why: it's because we're in the industrial age, and we found easier and easier methods to produce all the stuff we need and want. It's called supply and demand. It's capitalism in action. So prosperity is growing. So that means that it has to be shared with the employers and they have to pay less wages. So we have that conversation. You understand, I want to make it very clear. It's a two-way street, supply and demand. So the answer, I'm not saying the answer is raising wages. Not at all. I'm just saying we need checks and balances. We need oversight. We need to have the conversation and blame correctly. If there's people to be blamed, blame the market manipulators who are setting, rigging, fixing the prices for gain because it goes on their side of the ledger. So they don't care that they water down your money. That's called currency debasement in economic terms, which is how they float this loan, this, what, almost $30 trillion loan with the Federal Reserve. That's how they do it. And whose pocket do you think that comes out? You think the politicians haven't been insulating themselves every time they allow these policies to happen? You know, Max and Stacy talk about how sound Bitcoin is. We could use copper. As long as it's some finite thing that's hard to get, like gold or copper, you know, where you've got to go pay labor to get it out of the mines and refine it and all that. Okay, it's just a matter... We could have sound fiat currency, but it requires checks and balances. It could be anything, but that explains why people were drawn into Bitcoin. They say, oh, it's limited. I get it. 
It's like buying anything that's a limited edition. You go, oh, it's going to be worth more, you know, so you get it. And that could be fiat money, and it should be. But the evil men don't allow it. They won't allow it. That's the only reason fiat currency has failed time and time again. But it could be sound, but it requires oversight. It requires what? The conversation, the discussion. That's checks and balances. It requires fairness and somebody coming out and standing up for these people.